Okay, in this particular example, we're going to take a look at how to uh, create the graph of y equals negative 2 log base 3 of the quantity x minus 4 plus 5. We're going to look at how that can be created by transforming the graph of y equals log base 3 of x. We looked at the, the graph of y equals log base 3 of x in one of our other examples. So now we're just trying to connect this to what we talked about before with the different transformations of functions. So the first thing that I'm going to do uh, here to transform this graph would be look inside the, the parentheses here and talk about any horizontal translations. Uh, so on the inside here I see an x minus 4. That x minus 4 on the inside is actually going to indicate that we have a horizontal translation of 4 units to the right. So I'll say translate right 4 units. Then, uh, once I've dealt with that horizontal translation, now I'm going to look out front. I see this negative 2 out front, and that actually does two things. Uh, the negative will reflect over the x-axis, and the 2 will be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And then finally, we're going to take a look at the plus 5 at the end. The plus 5 at the end is a vertical translation of 5 units upward. So we will translate up 5 units. My advice would be to save that vertical translation for the end. Sometimes people start to talk about that vertical translation before they start telling me to stretch vertically or uh, reflect. Um, you need to be careful with that. Um, if you were doing that, um, you would kind of be implying that this negative 2 is also being multiplied by this 5, which it is in fact not. So you want to make sure that you deal with everything that would be affected by that before you deal with this. Just kind of a, a good rule of thumb to keep your trans, uh, transformations in an order that will actually produce the graph of the function if somebody was actually trying to follow them step by step as you had listed them. We'll take a look here in a moment at the uh, some different properties and characteristics of this graph um, and go from there. All right, so now let's take a look at some characteristics of this graph. Use what we know about the parent function y equals log base 3 of x for starters and then go kind of see how these different transformations have affected this. So just a real quick rough sketch of the parent function log base 3 of x did something like this, passed through the point uh, 1, 0 right there. It had a vertical asymptote line of x equals 0. So now that we've started to apply some transformations to this, let's start to see how that gets affected. Um, for the first transformation that we talked about, that horizontal uh, translation of four units to the right uh, actually will affect the domain. The domain of the original function log base 3 of x was from 0 to infinity, so if I've moved that four units to the right, this would be from 4 to infinity for that domain. The range of this original one was from negative infinity to positive infinity. It kept going down forever, it kept going up forever like that. Um, so when I start moving this left, right, up, down, reflecting it, anything like that, that's not going to be affected here. So the range is still going to be negative infinity to positive infinity for these uh, logarithmic functions. Uh, the asymptote line there is probably another one that's pretty easy to talk about, so I'm going to go ahead and address that uh, next. The asymptote line originally for log base 3 of x was the vertical line right here with, um, on the, along the y-axis, which had equation x equals 0. Now if I've translated that 4 units to the right, it would no longer be the line x equals 0, but it would be the line x equals 4. Again, make sure you're including the x equals part to make that the equation of a vertical line for that. Uh, X and Y intercepts. Now this particular graph actually does not have a Y intercept. The original function did not have a Y intercept because of the asymptote line here. So if I moved everything to the right four more units, it's still not going to cross the Y axis. So I can say none for that. If I had taken the original and translated it left though, you would see that it would cross the Y axis. So we would want to make sure that we uh, go about finding that by plugging zero uh, in for X. 
and then trying to evaluate for that. And then finally, we have the x-intercept. So that's going to take a little bit more work to find the x-intercept here. Again, thinking back to what we talked about with other functions, to find the x-intercept, you will plug 0 in for y. So I'm just going to take this function here, and I'm going to plug 0 in for y. So that's 0 equals negative 2 log base 3 of x minus 4 plus 5, like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this for x. Now, you might be wondering how you do that. I'm going to show you that right now. The first thing I would need to do would be get this plus 5 to the other side. So I'll have negative 5 equals negative 2 log base 3 of x minus 4, like so. Then I'll get rid of the negative 2 uh, right there by dividing both sides by negative 2. That will give me 5 halves equals log base 3 of x minus 4. Going from there, uh, this is the point where you would go ahead and convert this to exponential form. Um, so we talked about that in the previous section. You'll take the base of 3 to this power equals x minus 4. So I do 3 to the 5 halves power equals x minus 4. For that, and then I need to go ahead and add 4. So I have um, 3 to the 5 halves power plus 4 is equal to x. Now again, if you want to rewrite that, I'm running out of room right here, but 3 to the 5 halves power would be the square root of 3 to the 5th, like that. And then you'd have the, the plus 4, that's what x is equal to right there. Uh, and then we can go ahead and round this and try to compute that as a, as a decimal. I'll go ahead and show putting that into my calculator here in a little bit, uh, because we're not going to be able to get that very exact with that, with that being irrational. Okay, so we just uh, solved for the y-intercept, sorry, the x-intercept algebraically. Now we're going to go ahead and put that into our calculator uh, with that. So we had the square root of 3 to the fifth power, and then plus 4 which we can see is about 19.59, roughly, if I rounded to the nearest hundredth uh, for that. So I can, in fact, confirm that if you uh, would like to see that confirmed graphically. If I go to my y equals screen here, I type in the function negative 2 log base 3 of x minus 4 uh, plus 5. Again, this calculator that I'm using has the log base feature. If yours didn't, then you would have to type in this part right here as a fraction uh, as log of an x minus 4 in parentheses over log of 3 using that change of base rule uh, that we had talked about. So just be careful with that. Uh, but if I go ahead and press graph, I can see it. Uh, go ahead and draw the graph of that function in there. I can't quite see where it crosses uh, the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and change the window. I'm going to go down here to the x maximum and make it something uh, larger, maybe like 30. I'll just try that and see what it looks like. And there I can see the x-intercept now. So then to find that, I will go to second and then the trace button here to get to the calculate menu. I will choose the zeros of the function. And then I need to do a left bound, right bound guess. Uh, right now my cursor is clearly to the left, so I just select that point. And I need to move to the right of where I think it crosses the x-axis. Get over here so I'm clearly past that. And hit enter. I don't really need to worry about the guess since there's only one spot where it crosses in between. I'll go ahead and move it back a little bit closer uh, to where I think it is. And then hit enter. And you should see the same thing down here, about 19.59 for that. So I could find that intercept graphically as well if you didn't want to find that algebraically uh, using your calculator. Okay, so we just did some work to find the x-intercept of uh, this graph algebraically. And uh, we saw that that ended up being the square root of 3 to the 5th uh, plus 4, like that. Actually, it would probably be a little bit better to write that 4 in front of that. Uh, so we have 4 plus the square root of 3 to the 5th. That way, there's no confusion. Uh, I'm trying to read somebody's handwriting like that to wonder if the 4 was supposed to be under the radical sign or not. It actually wasn't. And then we went ahead and said that this is approximately equal to 19 .59. Five nine. If we were if we were to round that to the nearest hundredth, 
Um, when I set up the questions on the assignment for this, I've, I'll uh, probably try to set it up to accept both the exact answer, which is definitely the best uh, way to put that. But if you want to make it maybe make maybe make a little bit more sense to you, uh, maybe using a rounded decimal might make a little more sense to you with that. So I'll try to set it up to accept uh, these rounded to the nearest hundredth as well, um, if if rounding would be necessary. Just a quick review of all the characteristics. The domain was from 4 to infinity, not including 4. The range was all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. We just talked about the x-intercept. I'm not going to repeat myself there again. We said this had no y-intercepts because the original parent function didn't. And since I moved this one to the right, I didn't have anything to deal with there. If I had moved it to the left, then I certainly would have. I had to find the y-intercept by just plugging 0 in for x and evaluating. And then... Finally, the asymptote line. Originally, the parent function had that vertical asymptote line at x equals 0. And since we've moved this 4 units to the right, it now has a vertical asymptote line at x equals 4. So we've talked about all those characteristics there.